Hey, what's going on there, YouTube? Piper Downs with you for another little video. First things first, I'm smoking some Samuel Gawith Navy Flake. As you guys know, I busted this tin open yesterday, and I think this is the third bowl or fourth bowl I've smoked already. Really digging it. This stuff is just exquisite. Smoking it out of my Dr. Grabo Grand Duke Quarter Bent Dublin. Really like this Dublin, actually. I think it's a great little smoker. I, I wasn't. Sm I haven't been smoking it lately because I thought I had burned. I thought I had burned into the wood, but really it was just the carbon cake was coming apart, basically. But I went ahead and reamed it a little bit and cleaned it up. And now she's back chiefing, back chooching. So I'm glad to have her back too. I was using her stem for um, for my diamond shank bulldog. And uh, I don't know, I just decided to pull this out. It's got a nice deep bowl. Um, you know, and I just felt like smoking it. Really, this is just a bit of a ramble. Kind of just wanted to talk about the Navy Flake again. I mean, honestly, I'm almost somewhat enamored with this tobacco. It's so good. All the things that I loved about the special Atakia Flake that Jermaine's makes, this has got it. It's got it all. Plus, it has a slightly uh, 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 another added dimension with the rum, the rum casing, the rum topping. But like I said, I've fallen in love so much so I just ordered a box. <laughs> Damn tobacco acquisition disorder get you know strikes again. But yeah, I just ordered a box along with a couple other goodies. I got some more Bayou Morning, a couple more ounces of that. I have literally smoked that every morning since the first time I smoked, the first morning I smoked some. And it's just, just perfectly named Bayou Morning. It's just perfect, man. It's so good for the morning. I love it. Um, honestly, EMP can't touch it with a 10-foot stick. As far as I'm concerned, EMP can't hold, doesn't hold a candle to it. I mean, as a morning blend. I like EMP, but something about that damn Bayou Morning, that, that Perique, it's just so good. And, the bur and, you know, the Burley is good. It adds a little depth to it. But, you know, I must say, um, it's just funny how, you know, how you're, uh, how, you know, once you've been smoking for a while and once you've actually invested some money, into tobacco, into pipe tobacco, and, and ordered a lot, you know, in a wide variety of it. All of a sudden, your preferences become very obvious to you. Um, because, and you know, I'll, I say this because I remember I was start, first started smoking a few years ago, or a couple years ago, started doing some YouTube bids. And, uh, you know, I'd only smoked maybe five or ten tobaccos, five or ten different blends, so... I really didn't have much of a frame of reference when it come to it, come down to it, you know, and I didn't really know how to explain what I was tasting. But um, this last go around, sorry, I'm so restless here. I can't quite get comfortable. But this last go around, I've had money to invest. So I've just been ordering like a madman. I mean, literally two months ago, I probably had five blends to my name. I must have 50 right now. Some are in bulk. Like where I bought a bunch of tins or, or I bought, you know, a 250 gram box like the Navy Flake and the at full Virginia Flake and the St. James Flake. 
but yeah, anyway, I bought all these different tobaccos in the last month, and I've just been sampling the hell out of them. You know, I haven't really finished any tins, so to speak. I really stuck with one and really just pounded it out. But I've smoked uh, uh, more than half or quite a lot of the Germain's blends in the last month. And I've smoked a bunch more of the Sam Gawith blends that I hadn't had before. I've tried out some Cornell and Deal blends. I've tried out some Greg Pease blends. Tried out some, I've had Dunhill, quite a few of theirs. But anyway, what occurred to me is that all of a sudden, now that I've tried all these blends, I have a better idea of what I like, you know, of, of, of what kind of blends am I going to enjoy, you know, which ones, you know, are going to be worth the money to invest in. Hmm. And I've started to realize that my, my initial impressions, my initial thoughts on pipe tobacco were, did not do me justice. My thoughts and prejudices did not do me justice. They, I missed out because of my own thoughts and prejudices, you know, and, 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 I, and all I can say is, don't be one of those people, you know. Don't be like me. If you haven't tried a lot of blends, reserve your opinion for after you've tried it. Or even companies like Cornell and Deal or McClellan's. You know, give some of their stuff a shot, you know, before you pass judgment. And, you know, I've really just come to realize that I remember when I first tried English Blend Skiff Mixture, Standard Mixture Mellow, Nightcap, Frog Morton, Cellar, a couple of the Frog Mortons, Frog Morton on the Bayou. I really enjoyed them. I really enjoyed them. But, like, and to the point where I thought I was an English guy. So, you know, I was more predisposed to buying Englishes at that point. And when I came back just months ago, same deal. Kind of thinking I'm an English guy, you know. So I go in and start investing all this money into English blends, Penzance, um, Balkan Sobrani, um, and a few others, I can't quite, I can't think of them right off the top of my head, but, you know, I've got all these, I bought all these English blends, and then, you know, and I enjoy them thoroughly, like Balkan Sobrani, Penzance, very good stuff. But, wasn't until I started messing around and ordering, you know, different stuff out of my, out of my, uh, out of my comfort zone, you know, I was used to Dunhill and a couple other um, blend or a couple other blending houses, Dunhill, Sam Gawith, and I hadn't really even tried all that many Sam Gawiths. But anyway, I ordered St. James Flake. I ordered um, a few of these, a few Perique blends. Uh, And I've just been giving them a go. Try, oh, remember, I also ordered the Mississippi River and the Plum Pudding, and I tried those out and enjoyed them. But, you know, I haven't really smoked much of those since I first bought them, since I first got the tins. And then a lot of it was because I didn't have much else to smoke. But um, now that I've got this uh, this cellar full of tobacco... All of a sudden, I find the ones that I'm going, that I'm gravitating towards are the flakes. Um, they're the vapors, but not all the vapors. It's weird because it, 
it really is weird because like the, the Bayou morning, been craving it every morning. But I've got, I've also got Dorchester as well. And I enjoyed it thoroughly. But I don't have the cravings for the Dorchester or even Cabby's mixture like I do for that Bayou Morning. And I was thinking that, you know, the, uh, what is it that, that separates the two? What is it that's, that's, you know, what is it about the Bayou Morning that has me coming back to it again and again? And, you know, I was thinking that it must, it has something to do with smokeability. It has something to do with smokeability. It has something to do well, the flavors me are, are definitely uh, you know, it has something to do with that. I don't know, it could be the burly too, but mainly I think it's the smoking, the uh the mechanics of it, the smokeability. It's such a smokable blend. I mean, uh fresh out of the bag or tin, it's ready to rock or at least the bag. I've got it in bulk. I don't have it in tins, but fresh out of the bag, ready to rock and roll. And, uh, you know, you pack it up. It takes a light wonderfully. Boom, you go to Chuchin. You get a lot of smoke. You get a wonderful, wonderful, satisfying... Um, Wonderful, satisfying flavors from the Perique and the Burley and the Virginia. And it ends up just being a really, really, really satisfying smoke. And I found that with Cornell and Dealer and these American blends, I think they are more geared towards that towards it being a more satisfying smoke, like a well-rounded smoke. The flavors aren't crazy, and it's not the, you know, the, the best tobacco, you know, top shelf, amazing tobacco with the best flavor, the best of the best. It's not that, but what it is, it's got a good, a good strong, a good, a good solid flavor to it, but it also has these wonderful smoking characteristics. And I don't know what it is, but it's just so satisfying to smoke that to smoke that stuff. I think maybe the Burley is just a really smokable type of tobacco. It just makes for a really good smoke. And I think that's why a lot of blends incorporate Burley. Like Stonehaven. That's got Burley. You know, but there's something to be said about, you know, the smokeability of this stuff, of that stuff. Mm. Mm. Now, don't get me wrong. There are those times when I really want flavor and I want to enjoy the flavors, you know, that when I really just want to sit down and just focus on the smoke and uh, the Bayou morning would be good for that. I, I definitely would, but it's not, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's monotone or monochromatic. Like it only has one flavor. It doesn't. And it's a very, it's a flavor. It's an all day smoke. It's something I could smoke at any time, but I think it's more suited to smoking while you're doing other things or early in the morning. Like I notice if I've got that Bayou morning going and while I'm doing stuff, it's just awesome. Whereas, and you don't have to pay much attention to it. The cut, it just burns straight down. You don't hardly have to tamp it. You don't hardly have to mess with it. 
It's almost like smoking a cigarette. It just goes, you know? It just does its thing. Whereas smokes like these English uh, blending houses like Samuel Gawith, um, J.F. Germain and Son, a lot of their tobaccos um, require a little bit more attention. A little bit more technique and finesse. And that can get tiring at times. Like when I'm trying to do something else, I end up having to put the pipe down because I can't devote the attention to the pipe that it needs. Keep having to relight, keep having to tamp, you know, I just can't do that sometimes. And I think that, you know, that's another reason why I go back to that Bayou Morning every, so often because it's something where I can just get it lit and then sit down and read or watch a movie or do whatever and just, you know, I almost forget I'm smoking it, but I'm being satisfied by it. But I'm not having to, you know, wet nurse it. I'm not having to hold its hand and, and walk it, you know, and, and, and pay a, a ton of attention to it. And that is a really nice aspect to that tobacco. Whereas I find a lot of these Sam Gawith and J.F. Germain blends, um, they require a little bit more attention. Some of them anyway, not all of them. I mean, Balkan Sobrani isn't too bad. Some of their shag cut stuff isn't too bad. Um, medium Flake isn't bad at all. when it comes to stuff like that anyway. But, you know, Full Virginia Flake or St. James Flake, I just find it to be a much tougher, or it's a much more intensive process to smoke that stuff. Sometimes I really like that about it, though. I like the, in, the, intensive, the, the intense, uh, intensiveness required gets my mind off of things, allows me to unwind and focus on something other than my problems or what's going on in the day. But I've started to, I don't know, understand what it is to be a pipe smoker a little bit better. I've started understanding my own habits, my own preferences. And the only way you can do that is by experimenting. You know, you'll never get good at folding and stuffing if you don't fold and stuff. You know, it takes practice. Um, you know, and, and you'll never know, you know, if you've never tried Balkan blends or if you've never tried English blends or, or Vapor blends or whatever, all kinds of different blends, how do you know if that, you know... That could be your favorite blend of all time, you know, and until you try it, you will never know that, you know, so. I don't know, there's a lot more to pipe smoking than, than I realized. Um, if you want there to be, however, I will, you know, put a caveat in there that, you know, for a long time, pipe smokers had one tobacco and that's all they smoked. My dad, that's all he, all he smoked was half and half. He didn't smoke anything else. That's what he liked to smoke. Uh, you know, that was his thing. And my grandmother, she told me her dad, all he smoked was Edgeworth. That's it. Edgeworth, period. She, she, uh, my grandfather was stationed in London, so my grandmother had a chance to go to Dunhills. And she bought some baby's bottom. This is in like the 60s when they were stationed there with, for the Air Force. And she sent it home to her dad. And, and he sent her a message back saying, yeah, perfect name. Cause it, you know, it tasted like a baby's bottom. He didn't like it. He thought it tasted like poop, like a baby's butt. It was really funny. Cause when she brought this up, I had a tin of baby bottom, like in my hand. It was weird. <laughs> it was so cool though, because she said, yeah, I bought my dad this baby bottom. I said, oh, you mean this? <laughs> and she just couldn't believe it. You know, it was crazy. But, you know, pipe smoking can just be a means to an end or a habit, like smoking cigarettes, you know, where you just pick one tobacco that you like, and you smoke it for the nicotine, you smoke it to relax, you don't smoke it for the, for, 
you know, uh, or I don't know, you know, you're, you're smoking to smoke, you know, you're not worried about all the fancy frills. That's kind of how those guys, how I see those kind of guys. They just like pipe smoking. They like their one tobacco. Whereas me, I see a little bit more of a hobby. You know, I like to experiment. I like to bounce around. Um, you know, it's just enjoyable to do what I've been doing, you know. And, and I know that uh, I see a lot of this stuff as investments because some tins I don't open. You know, I may end up selling those tins down the road, you know. Or, and not only that, the beauty of this, uh, this hobby is time is on your side because, you know, um, like I have, you know, probably, a, you know, seven, eight, I have hundreds of dollars in my cellar. Well, it's only worth more as time goes on. The tobacco only gets better as time goes on. You know, let's say I walked away from pipe smoking tomorrow. Well, you know, that's fine because when I come back to it, all my tobaccos are still going to be here, but they're going to be even better than when I left, which I discovered that last time. I had some Christmas cheer and some other flake tobaccos socked away. And when I come back to it this time, I had these wonderful aged tobaccos. Like I had like a three-year-old tin of some Frog Morton, you know, almost a whole hundred gram tin minus like one or two bowls. It was awesome, you know, and uh, that's why I can justify buying all this tobacco, really. It's an investment. You know, either I come back to it and I really enjoy um, the investment or, you know, I sell some of it and I, re you know, re get a return on my, on my investment. You know, either way, I'm going to see that return e either in enjoyment or in money. So that's kind of how I justify my, justify my tobacco, uh, expenditures and, and, and my hobby. But anyway, I'm just about finished with this bowl guys. And I'm thinking, you know, this is a pretty darn long, uh, pretty darn long video for me to just ramble on like this but uh you know just a few thoughts of you know what I've been thinking about lately and I hope you guys enjoyed the video um and uh if you guys you know have any comments you know just uh you know leave a comment but uh until next time enjoy your smokes guys Piper Downs over and out